how many people know what a fragile pen is? Basically, it's a cemented layer in the soil and uh, it's below the surface and uh, no water goes through it, uh, no roots go through it, it just pretty well stops everything so it makes a shallow soil in most cases. So there was a group of us decided that um, rather than for the last three or four hundred years we just accepted the fact that that's the case. Very few people tried to figure out what they could do about it, we decided we would try to do something about it and um, these four people banded together, John's one, I'm one, and then these two guys, Tassos and Chris, uh, in the laboratory at Lexington, uh, ran that part, and we just uh, divided up responsibilities and see if we could find something. Small grain growers, corn growers, soybean growers, great help. Really good help. I'm thankful for them helping us. Uh, for you that don't know what a fragipan is, this is a fragipan soil. It comes uh, just uh, right up on the hill. Top uh, dark layer, sub, uh, top soil, subsoil, and then here is the fragile pan, and uh, that's where things stop. That's where the water builds up. Uh, I've been stuck in these soils before. Uh, as you get more rain in the winter and less evaporation, the water stops here. It'll build all the way to the top, and and uh, once you get stuck in this stuff, you're stuck. Now, I mean, you, you can't get out. So. Uh, and then in the summertime, uh, you only got two feet of soil, uh, basically, and, and you run out of water. <coughs> so that's the problems with it. This is the uh, cross-section now of a fragile pan down in there, and uh, no water movement, no root movement in any of this except the gray, and then you'll get some water movement and some rooting through that. Now those gray cracks in there don't go all the way through the fragile pan. You don't, they didn't leak below the fragile pan, but uh, you do get some. Where do they occur in Kentucky? Uh, all your upland, uh, all your upland fields in the purchase area have fragile pans, almost every one of them. Uh, all these areas, all these counties in here, uh, Northern Christian, Northern Todd, uh, Henderson, um, Crittenden, all the way over here to Hardin County, Muhlenberg, I'm not Muhlenberg, but uh, Breckenridge, and those areas, they, they all have, all your upland soils, a lot of your upland soils have fragile pens. Three million acres, about three million acres in the United States. I mean, in Kentucky, about three million acres in Kentucky. And uh, those are the soils that, as long as I've been here, the farmers talk about hard to farm, uh, wet in the winter, dry in the summer, and uh, they expect lower yields on those farm, on those uh, crops, on those fields. Just a little bit about what the fragile pen is. Uh, it's that cemented layer. Yeah, we had a we had silt loams blown in here in Kentucky, and we're really lucky to have a silt loam. Uh, and it was blown in several times, and it was due to the glaciers coming down and the erosion that took place from the glaciers and going down the Mississippi River uh, floodplain. You know, you go from Wycliffe, Kentucky, to Poplar Bluff at 60 miles a floodplain and the wind was blowing sometimes and it, it just deposited a lot of land in here and so soil in here so where they deposit the last deposit over the one before uh, right at that interface is where that fragile pan occurred so that that fragile pan it, it, and, the, and the cement occurred and it cemented that soil that was below the soil that was deposited it cemented its soil so if you can break that cement you have soil, it's, it's not like rock. So basically, if you can break that cement, you have soil. It's, uh, that, that layer is two to four feet thick, so you can't get through it, and you can't break it with a the, with the subsoiler. It's cemented by aluminum silicates. It's on the average 20, 24 inches to the top of the fragile pan. And we talk about roots uh, and stopping and limited water availability and wetness, but uh, if you look at that uh, NRCS estimates on yields, uh, about 20-25% reduction on those soils compared to these limestone type soils. So it's a significant reduction in yield. It not only occurs in Kentucky, but it occurs in most of the eastern, some, this is, an, I think this is exaggerated, but anyway it occurs, occurs in most of the eastern part of the United States. So it's, it's a pretty big problem in the United States. So how did we tackle it? Uh, started uh, in the laboratory and uh, 
not entirely, but to a large extent, the laboratory. And, and these fellows were doing slaking experiments, and they would take the hardest part of the clod, introduce different chemicals and different extracts of different plants on that, and if it fell apart, then it was a hit. And if it didn't fall apart, then it's not going to do it in the in the field. Found one plant. Uh, I mean, we, we tested corn, soybeans, uh, wheat, rye, and about every, not every, but uh, many of the cover crops that could be used. There was only one plant that we found that, will, that has the chemistry to break this thing apart. Have potassium sulfate, potassium chloride, sodium nitrate, uh, I'm missing one, John, sodium fluoride. Uh, that will break it apart, but they've got to get down through their profile, so we know that ryegrass will take it down through the profile, or roots will go down there, and so that's the one we're working with mostly right now. And uh, we're continuing to look for other plants, continue to look for other chemical compounds that might, uh, might help out. We did work in the, in the greenhouse, they've got work going to the greenhouse, and we plant these different plants that show promise. Uh, apply different chemicals that show promise and kind of get it closer to the field. It can work in the greenhouse and not in the field, but you got more evidence as you go down through there what's happening. Okay, thank you, John. So we started out with ryegrass in, the, in there and the, after it, we got a hit, uh, we started with ryegrass in there in the greenhouse and um, first time then nothing happened. And then the second cycle, uh, stuff started turning white. This is the top of the pan with ryegrass. This is the top of the pan without ryegrass. Stuff started turning white. And so we started looking at what is this white? And uh, when you magnify it, it's individual soil particles. That the cement is gone, and now the particles are released, and they can become soil. And they, they'll change back to the same color as this, of this subsoil. And, they'll start to get structure similar to the subsoil, and, and so they change into soil. And of course, it can accelerate it in the greenhouse, and, and we got a better chance to look and see what's happening. And we can see right through these plastic cores, so that really helps us. So we were gathering evidence, and we looked at these other chemicals too that, that have, and we got those in the greenhouse and seen if they're helping uh, uh, ryegrass. We think they would help and accelerate this effect. Uh, but before you guys are going to accept it, y'all people are going to accept it, it's got to work in the field and it's got to uh, increase your yields enough that you make money that it's worth your time. It, it's got to do both those things and we've got to prove that uh, before we, we feel like y'all will accept it and rightfully so. So we look for different ways to, to verify that it's really happening that it's real and, and how much of it's real. And so found one site and not many people raise ryegrass in annual ryegrass state of Kentucky. I mean, most people are trying to kill it and they don't want it anywhere. And so it's hard to find a field that people want to raise annual ryegrass. Howard Martin, John Martin, he invented the row cleaners. Uh, he has a field over there. They've had five years of ryegrass cover crop in nine or 10 years. and. So we went out and compared that to a field that's right beside it, and it looked like that about this is the to the, to the fragile pan where the control, where that field has never had ryegrass. This is with ryegrass, so it looks like it's about five inches deeper, uh, as best we can tell on this kind of unscientific comparison, unreplicated, unreplicated comparison. And then we found another field up in Logan County where this guy was using ryegrass to graze, really good ryegrass is really good uh, feed and uh, it looked like another again that it lowered it was about uh, four and a half to five inches deeper to the pan where it had been using ryegrass so that's some evidence that it's working in the field but the only problem is that you can look at the depth on our field on our crops back there you can look at the depth here to the fragile pan the depth here the fragile pan and there can be five inches difference usually not but there can be so that really doesn't prove it, but if we get enough of them, and I'm still looking, we get enough of them, we have. So we, we, we're, beginning, we're gaining evidence. In fact, I believe based on a greenhouse and uh, what we're finding in the field that we're proving that ryegrass actually makes a difference. 
what does it do for yield? Uh, I told you the first year we planted ryegrass in the greenhouse didn't say a thing. First year we had ryegrass in the field and grew corn after it, no difference in yield. I told you the second year that we could see that white forming and things beginning to change. Second year we had ryegrass as a cover crop, we had soybeans after it, we got a, a really nice yield increase for growing soybeans after ryegrass. Had a little bit of a drought right here. So if you're breaking down the fragile pan, increasing more soil and more depth, then you should have more increase, you should have increase in water storage and you should be able to withstand the drought better. Uh, this year, perfect year, uh, where you had, had plenty of rain no matter what, but we still got a yield increase by using, but it was not significant by using the ryegrass cover crop but it wasn't much. In 2016, uh, there was nitrogen problems, and I hate to admit it, but we were unable to get the yields that we should have gotten, uh, I mean, that we were able to make comparisons with. So we, we're just getting started on that, and, and honestly, we don't really know what it's gonna be worth to you. And so we found this guy in Southern Illinois years ago, his name's Junior Upton, and he was working with a guy named Mike Plummer at the University of Illinois, and they were doing research on uh, different cover crops. And uh, Mike write, wrote some of this stuff up, and, and he had some fantastic yields after ryegrass cover crop yield increases compared to no ryegrass cover crop. I thought, you know, I, I don't believe that. I can't explain it. And uh, I've never seen any yields like that, increases like that. So I just dismissed it. And uh, after we started this research, and that was a number of years before we started the research, after we started the research, I remember that, and we threw ryegrass in the mix of the things we were doing. And, and uh, so I called him up, and he said, yeah, he says, yeah, we did. And uh, come on up. And so we, we went on up there, and John was with us there, the, Second time we went up and where he had, this guy had 15 years of annual ryegrass as a cover crop and then grew corn after it. And we went in there and, and they had these cores and compared to a little roadway right here where they just had bluegrass and took that and boy, there was a big difference in what you could see and described. And, and uh, he said, I'm getting better yields. And I said, well, can you send me the yields? And I said, yeah. So he, he sent them to me. And these red line, and I was hoping to see something like this, you know. And he sent that red line, and oh my gosh, it was, uh, well, you guys go through that every year. You know, yields are up and down depending on what the situation is. And, and I thought, well, that's not going to help a bit. And so I compared it to the average yields of the state of, I mean, state of Hamilton County, to the, to the yield, uh, Average corn years of Hamilton County uh, on the same year, and plotted that in the blue, and it come a little bit clear. Thank you, John. And then, uh, so then to to look at it a little bit better, we set uh, we looked at the difference between Upton's yields and uh, average fields of Hamilton County. The average yields of Hamilton County included fragipan soils, no fragipan soils, low hill ground, low ground, one variety, two variety, 20, 40 different, you know what I'm trying to say. I mean, we're, we're, it's, so I don't know how good it is, but I think it's a, a pretty good indication to some extent what happened. So we subtract the difference, and so that means that the Hamilton County, Illinois yields become zero. And, and, and we look, and they didn't, that field, when he first started that, it didn't, it didn't do, we wouldn't expect it to do as well. I mean, it was a fragile bent soil shallow. Wouldn't expect it to do as well. But then as it grew more annual ryegrass, year after year, cover crop, that sucker just kept getting better. This is the trend line. Just kept getting better. And, uh, well, that tells you several things. That, number one, it tells you that it's a continuous effect. You only get so much chemical with each time you grow ryegrass to break down the fragile bin. You only get so much. 
and uh, as you add more, you get more breakdown. And the other thing is, it showed that he started 15 bushels on the average below the county average and wound up 40 bushels above. That's a 40% increase. Uh, that's huge. I don't know how representative that would be of us in Kentucky. Uh, I don't know. But even if it's half that, that's pretty doggone good. And so uh, we're really hoping that we can verify the fact that we get something at least half that, and, and that's what we're looking at. We, we've got to get several more years. We've got to get up in here somewhere on our research to make sure that we know what we're doing. And, and, and the, but if, when, when we get close to that and we feel like we know what we're doing, uh, we're going to write this thing up, make it available to the public, and we're going to start having field days and things like that to because uh, it's really pretty big. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the amount of money difference between him raising that ryegrass cover crop over 15 years and not raising it. Uh, or, or, or in other words, this is a county average. And he starts out 15, 20 bushels below and, it, and we figured $4 corn. Now that's a pretty safe estimate, $4 corn, I think and figured $36.50 to plant it and to kill it. So we take that, take that off every year from cost of ryegrass, growing ryegrass. So he starts out losing $20 the first year. Uh, uh, actually he loses 36, but the trend line gives us 20. So it's, you know, the calculations aren't exactly right, but I mean, they're right, but the trend line messes it up. But anyway, uh, then he starts to increase yields, and he starts to finally, after two or three years, make a little money. But when you figure the first five years losing some and making some, he makes a little bit, breaks even, like first five years. So you make, you make a little bit. But then as that soil gets deeper, stores more water, then the next five years, add those five years together, what's the return? $400, almost $800 between the 10th and the 15th year. Add all these up, all three of these up. <coughs> He, over not raising annual ryegrass on this fragile pan soil, uh, compared to raising it, it's, it's you know, $1,200 an acre. If he had a thousand acres, you could buy a tractor, you know, at least. <laughs> Maybe more than that, over with $1.2 million. And uh, uh, so, you know, and if you've got, uh, Two million acres in the state, of, three million acres, in the state of Kentucky. That you do this, it's it's quite a little bit. Fifty million acres in the United States. Um, so I, I think it's it's if you have fragile pen soils, uh, it's something significant to uh, to think about and to use. Anybody got any questions? <laughs>